Hello, Electroheads. It's great to be back on this channel and I love reviewing exciting e-bikes for you because they're a massive passion of mine. Today, I have the Engui Engine Pro. I really do like this bike. And why do I like this bike? It's got a 750 watt rear driven motor with alloy wheels. It's got a folding frame with front and rear suspension. It's got a rear rack for all your toys, fat 20 inch by four inch tires, a big heads up display, and hydraulic brakes on the front and rear. Now that is everything you need to get around town and get around the mountains or wherever you wanna go off road. So in this video today, I'm gonna to try and give you a rounded view of how well this bike's built and how usable it is. So how strong are the components is something I really wanna go into detail about each of the things I really like here and how usable is it day to day? Will it fit in your car? Can you get it around the city? How usable is it off road? Let's get into it. Regarding legalities, this bike does have a 750 watt rear motor, which makes it illegal on UK roads, which is why we've come to the Stratford Olympic Park on this closed road to um, have a go and show you what it can do. I like to have a 750 watt motor on my bike because it's very powerful, it gets you around town real quick, and with having such thick wheels and such a large suspension setup, it's really needed. 750 watts is really justified on a bike like this because of the weight, the large tires and the large suspension componentry, it really does make a difference having that power. And it's a hell of a lot of fun. This bike weighs in at 38 kilos, making it a bit of an SUV in terms of bicycles. But every extra kilo is put into suspension, fat tires and other components, which will improve the comfort and reliability of the ride. I was able to lift the bike over my head, but I don't plan on doing that again. But getting it in and out of a car folded up is possible. I think my favorite part about this bike is the fact that it has alloy wheels. Alloy wheels takes away the need for spokes and spokes need maintenance. So having an alloy wheel with the motor integrated into it takes out a nice amount of weight and just makes the whole thing run smoother. It has hydraulic brakes. Hydraulic brakes are needed to stop such big wheels, so it's a great bonus against mechanical brakes. Enguin claim that their bike has IERS, which is their name for regenerative braking. In short, it doesn't really work and it's useless. Nice idea, but not great application. I do hope to see this feature more on e-bikes in the future. Here is the hill test I wanted to show you guys. Let's see if it can handle it. Do this, do this. Yes, yes. Yes! <laughs> Woo. So along with the new alloy wheels that we see on e-bikes these days, is these integrated batteries into the frame. The battery is 16 amp hours at 48 volts, which is the standard for this category of e-bikes. That will give you generally 20 miles on full throttle and much more if you use pedal assist and ride slow. Their site claims up to 75 miles, but also mentions 20 miles on sport mode. Generally, e-bike companies get their range claims from questionable mathematics based on some other planet physics, but in London, you'll probably get 20 to 40 miles. In China, there isn't really intellectual property, so it's kind of like the development of e-bikes has progressed as a co-creation between all the companies over the last 10 years. So something that you see new on one brand gets released on another brand and this bike here has all of the things I've wanted to see for so long in one bike at a cheap price point because it's made in China. That says a lot because I could never make a bike like this for 1400 euros, but I could buy a bike like this knowing nothing about electric bikes and I wouldn't have to fix anything. But if I then decide to get really interested in my bike and wanted to start upgrading components, this is just such a great platform to start with. You could you know, you go to town on suspension and brakes if you wanted, or you could just keep it as it is because so much research and development has gone into what works here. It's just a beautiful combination of great components, to be honest. Let's have a look at the cockpit up here on the handlebars, all the controls we have. We have the six speed Shimano Altus shifter, which is working really well and is not their entry level. It's a bit better than that. So I like to see that. You have nice chunky hydraulic disc brakes made by Logan. Sure, those are great. Well, they feel really good. That's the main thing. 
that's not how I want to sound when I'm out in the city. It kind of sounds like a reversing three-ton van, but it's a horn and you don't get that most of the time. The throttle is on the left. Um, it's very responsive. It's a thumb activated throttle. I'd rather it was on the right. See, everything here is flipped over. It's Euro style. So if you're not used to bikes, that's fine because you're just learning new anyway. But for someone who's experienced, it's kind of sometimes a bit strange with your muscle memory. Then we've got the display unit with the thumb control, which is quite packed with features. It's got the on and off button, plus and down for power levels. It's got information button to change the info you're getting up on the front. And it's got the headlight control. It has front and rear headlights. Well, headlight on the front and brakes on the rear. The screen is really nice because I get a lot of details here. I've got my battery with a percentage level, which is very nice rather than just like four bars, which you sometimes get. You've got five speed levels, which are all sport, even if you're in zero. Uh, I don't know why. Then you've got, you've got your average speed, which you can then change to total distance. Then you've got the trip distance, the power, which you're outputting, which actually goes up to 850, which is more than the 750 they say. Uh, the trip time and the max speed, which we got to 57.6 kilometers an hour. Right, well, let's move on to some off-roading. So regarding the feel of the ride and the sitting position, you know, this is a very comfortable position. The handlebars can be raised, and the seat can go up and down a fair bit. So you've got a choice of different ways to ride the bike, whether you want to ride like a proper cyclist with your legs straight, or you just want to cruise around like you're kind of on a Harley or something. But the only thing I don't like is these handlebars are quite narrow. I really wish they were kind of out here. That's the only thing that feels a bit small and gimmicky on this bike, but I've still managed to do a fair bit of off-roading and the narrow handlebars paired with the folding mechanism means it's a lot easier to get in your car and to store at home, for instance. Let me demonstrate that. Something else I really like is this tubed alloy rear rack. It's generally quite hard to get a good rear rack on a bike with rear suspension because it's all fixed off the back. This rear rack is really chunky and I think it's chunky enough to hold a passenger. And legally, if your bike is adapted to carry a passenger, you may do so. So all I need is a little seat and then it's a two passenger vehicle, which is so useful. If you like this bike, we do have an affiliate code in the description, which will get you the best price on this bike from Ingui themselves. Also, Ingui are running a competition where you can win yourself some free bikes and some goodies. Check out the description to find out how to enter. Let's talk a little bit about value for money, which I think is the best part of this bike. You can get it for 1,430 euros on their website. Equivalent in pounds would be about 1,450 pounds. That for a 750 watt e-bike, I think is a hell of a lot of value. And I've waited a long time for brands to get to a point where they're offering this amount of features for that price. And it seems to hold together well. So, you know, that's a, that's a huge point for this bike, I think. Well, to conclude, we've been out doing off-road tests, on-road tests, checking out the componentry, Genuinely, I love this bike. And I know 1,400 euros isn't that cheap, but it is damn cheap for what you get here. You wouldn't want to spend any less for something like this. Straight up, I would buy one of these. I, I think, think you, you should, should too. too. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the review. If you liked what you saw, please subscribe for more of our content and we'll see you next time.